Hello, this is Allie with the Perception Trainers, author of The Perception Diet, and today we are going to talk about why your spiritual path is not the cause of all of your problems. Okay, so there's a common thing that I hear all the time um, in this kind of <clears throat> spirituality, personal growth, da 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 realm, and from people who are not a part of this and who are kind of on the outside looking in, um, which is to say that like, you know, I've been on this spiritual path or this healing path for so long and it seems to be not actually working. Like I don't feel like I'm actually getting happier, I don't feel like I'm actually getting better. It feels like this spiritual path is actually causing me more pain. It feels like it like every time I, you know, do my personal introspection or go to a healing thing or whatever, it's like I find a new thing that's wrong with me. I find a new thing that's hurting me. I find a new or and I, I or, or maybe you feel like you're constantly struggling with the things that you are fi finding and not actually um, finding a relief. Like this, your spiritual practices are you know making you aware of all of this stuff, but you're not actually getting there to the point where you feel like you've transcended it. And um, or I've talked to a lot of people who are kind of like maybe on a spiritual path themselves and looking at other gurus and teachers who they at one point looked up to or whatever and then found out later that like they still have problems in their lives and they still have things going on in their lives and they're just like see like everyone's fucked up um this stuff doesn't really work maybe i'm never actually going to get over my issues because even these people that i look up to they haven't gotten over their issues either they're still in their shit they're still dealing with their stuff and and then like i say for someone who's totally on the outside, who's like not on a spiritual path or like not on an awakening path, they're kind of more just in the matrix doing whatever they're doing. It can be easy for them to look at spiritual people and be like, yeah, you guys look like you're suffering. Like you don't, you don't let yourself watch TV. You don't like, you're on weird diets. You're constantly like meditating and finding out shit about yourself and like doing all this work. And again, you don't look happy. It doesn't look like you're, it's working. So what's the deal? Why are we bothering? And I think that this topic really needs to be addressed because like I say, um, it, it's affecting people. It's affecting people on all spectrums, right? It's it's either it's either working to create um, super amounts of discouragement and um, dispassion, yeah, disillusionment on the path if you are on it, and it's working to kind of um, repel people that need this healing work, that need to be doing this stuff, which is everybody, uh, this awakening work. Um, because it looks so unattractive. So here's the real deal, all right? There's absolutely a thing where you can be on a spiritual path without being on a spiritual path, okay? You can be doing all the right things and all, like, <laughs> you can be doing what you think are all the right things, following all the right gurus, doing all the right stuff, okay? But still never actually getting to the root of why you, you have the unhappiness that you have, why you have the pain that you have, what's actually going on with you, and you're not actually being able to complete with it and transmute it and transcend it, okay? There are so many healing modalities out there that are simply completely ineffective. Now, that being said, there are no mistakes. There are no wrong things on the path. And this is what I think is very important to understand, is that ultimately, what the spiritual path is going to lead you to, well, I guess not ultimately, for now, the ultimate thing, which we will expand beyond, always. This is, there is never an end point, right? We're always going to keep growing and, and exchange, expanding and all of this. But for now, generally speaking, where the path is going to end up is you taking responsibility for yourself, you fully owning your power, fully owning who and what you are, fully realizing who and what you are, not based on your experience, not based on all of the stuff that happened to you, not based on your circumstance, not based on your body, not based on your anything, based on what is actually the ultimate truth of yourself. You are then going to integrate that with the relative truth of yourself so that you no longer have trauma associated with any of the things that have happened to you. That's what transcendence is, where there's no longer any stories in your head about how your past was painful and how you need to protect yourself in the future, 
right? That is a unified individual. That is a tra that is a transcended individual. Is they are fully at one with what's happening in life, and life is no longer a traumatic event for them. So they're not living in the past or living in the future. You're living in the present, and pain might still happen, right? Like your best friend still might die or whatever. I use that example all the time. But there's no suffering involved, right? It's not trauma, and we don't carry things with us into moments where they're not happening, right? We can live in what actually is, experience what's happening, there's no trauma, and then there's no residue. That is transcendence. And this is what we are working towards on the spiritual path, is a remembering of who we have always been. And and a, a coming back into alignment with the truth of ourselves, which is that we cannot be injured, we cannot be marred, and all of our negative thoughts and all of our negative beliefs and all of that stuff is essentially just not true, right? About ourselves and about the world. And so, in order to get there, for most of us, because we are so far away from that consciousness, we are so caught up in our stories, caught up in our identifications, caught up in our woundings, caught up in all that stuff like we've talked about in that, all the Emotional masters, Mastery series, which I highly recommend you watch if you have not already watched that. Um, we need many, 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 many steps for most of us. Okay, so not to say that this is absolutely necessary. It's totally possible for someone to just wake up to the truth of themselves in a minute. They don't need any steps. They can just transcend all of their pain, integrate it, and be one with the present moment. That's happened. Spontaneous awakenings happen. But generally speaking, that's not what happens. Generally speaking, what happens is we take steps along a path. We take detours. We go left and we go right and we wind our way and we have these kind of like personal journeys towards this ultimate end of taking responsibility for ourselves and completing with what happened to us. And it can look like we're not getting anywhere. It can look like things aren't happening when they should be. It can look like all this stuff when really that's just the path. Okay? So that's the first thing to remember. The spiritual awakening path is not a ticket out of pain, a ticket out of pain, really. This is like the biggest bottom line. So many people think, okay, I'll do the spiritual path because it'll get rid of all my problems and it means that I won't have any more pain in my life. And that is the biggest kind of determining factor where all of these other mindsets that block people from healing come from. The spiritual path is not going to take your pain away. Okay? First thing, the, spiritu the true spiritual path, what it's going to do is it's going to bring all of it to the surface. Because in order for something to be healed, it needs to be looked at. It needs to be brought into the light of consciousness. The reason it hurts you right now is because it is in the dark. It is evil, if you really want to look at it that way, okay? Evil, unconsciousness, darkness, lack of awareness, they're all the same word for the same stuff. And that is what causes us pain and suffering. Well, that's what causes us suffering, right? Is our lack of awareness, of our resistance to life, all of the things we believe about ourselves that are out of alignment with the truth, all the things that we believe about life that are out of alignment with the truth, and this is what causes our suffering, right? This is what causes us to react to our partner like they're our mother, right? This is what causes us to put a filter of perception on where we can only receive all of the negative shit and everybody rejecting us and there's all these other people loving us and we can't participate in that because our perspective is so filtered and so messed up towards rejection because of all of our internal wounding that we haven't resolved and all of this shadow in it within ourselves that we haven't looked at that continues to, you know, try to reflect back to us that this is what's happening. We've got internal wounds, we've got internal wounds, we've got internal wounds. Integrate, integrate, take responsibility, integrate, integrate, take responsibility. But instead of doing that, we're projecting it outwards, right? We're saying, well, no, the world's hurting me. My body isn't right, my job isn't right, my relationship isn't right, all of these things are triggering me and I need to get rid of all of that stuff so that I can be good, right? So understanding that the spiritual path, like if you take on any kind of personal awareness work, if you take on any personal growth work, and in the beginning, like pretty much all of it works. Remember like how an airplane flies. The farther away from the destination that an airplane is, the more off track it can be and still be heading in the general right direction, right? But the closer you get 
to the point where you're trying to get, the more precise you have to be. So this is the thing, okay? Because so many of us are so far away from enlightenment consciousness, which is simply, I am at one with reality, I am completed with my past, I can be here in the present moment, being fully awake and aware. All of my faculties are here. Um, because so many of us are so far away from that, there are a gabillion modalities out there, all of which sort of semi kind of get you a little bit somewhere, right? There are steps on a path, which technically it's fine. They work, right? What happens is when people who get on a spiritual path or get on a personal growth path or whatever feel like they've found something that works and then they get stuck on it, this is where the problem is, okay? If you are not continually expanding and growing in your practices, if your practices are not bringing you new awareness of yourself that literally causes you to have different perspective of yourself, a different perspective of what happened to you, a different perspective of what's happening to you, right? In a pretty quick way, right? If you're not pretty regularly seeing things in a completely new way, experiencing things in a completely new way, having less um, of the same familiar pain over and over, suffering over and over and over again, then that's where we can say, okay, you've stagnated, right? You've gone on to something, and instead of that now incurring real growth in you, you've reached stagnation, okay? So if you're still trying to deal with the same stuff that you have been dealing with for the past five or ten years, and you think you're on a spiritual path, it's time to shift what you're doing, okay? Stagnation shouldn't happen like that, right? You should be integrating and you should be expanding. So if that's not happening, again, really there's no should. You're allowed to do that for as long as you want. But if you want to actually grow and actually transcend, right, your personal path should be pulling you to see things differently. It should be always pulling you to take deeper responsibility for yourself, not and deeper and deeper responsibility for yourself, needing less and less of your environment to be any sort of particular way for you not to feel suffering, for you not to be in a state of trauma, right? This is the true spiritual path. So usually what we see when we see people who have been on a spiritual path for a really long time and they still have problems, okay, if it's the same problem that they've been having for the last 10 years, then yeah, they've stagnated, okay? So of course that's going to be hard to look at and we don't really want to look at that, but that's a thing, right? Because they, they found something that they attached themselves to, like a method or a teaching or a whatever, and then they got stuck on it because it was working for a while, and that's what I'm saying, everything's going to work for a while. But then you need to transcend it, you need to be continuing to transcend it and, and go further. But if they made a career out of it, or if they made a, uh, yeah, like a persona out of it, or uh, that's how they make their money now, they might be a little bit um, resistant to continuing to evolve on their path. And what we know is that when you're not evolving, when you're not growing, when you're not changing, you don't get to stay where you are, you start to ferment and degrade, okay? So if people are still dealing with their same shit over and over and over again, then yeah, they've fermented, right? It, and that doesn't mean that the teachings that they have aren't true and that they don't work, right? They, they were true and they did work for a period of time. However, if you don't keep going, it's going to start to ferment. So don't necessarily throw out the teacher just because they haven't transcended their shit, okay? Use their technique so long as it's working for you and it's actually, it's causing growth and expansion and change, just like we were talking about, changing in your perception and a deepening of responsibility within yourself and less of a need of the external environment to be any particular way for you to start to feel good and aligned with yourself, where you're starting to, com to complete with your past, you're, you are feeling less traumatized by life. As long as that's what's happening for you, then that's great. Keep using that tool. Now, if your spirit, you look at your spiritual teacher and you think, okay, they still have problems, but they haven't been dealing with the same problem over and over and over again. This is something we need. This is number two, okay? The spiritual path is not designed to completely get rid of all pain. It's not going to do that, okay? Because again, the entire point of your existence is growth and expansion. Growth and expansion. So the most painful place you can be is in stagnation. So this is what it gets so frustrating. If your spiritual path isn't actually growing you, if you're getting stuck somewhere and you're just hitting the same thing over and over and over again and it's not moving you forward, you need a new tool. You need to let go of what you're doing and you need to find something else. Second thing, if you're expecting 
your spiritual path to create a, a universe or a life for you where you never have pain, where you never have anything negative, where you never have anything hard, where you never have anything you need to work through, that's delusion number two. That is not the point of life. There is always going to be something to face. There is always going to be something that's asking you to grow and expand and change. And like I say, here's the thing. As you move out of fear and into love, right, that this, this spiritual path is, will be taking you on, as you're more and more integrated within yourself, as you're more and more taking responsibility for yourself, here's the growth and expansion that life requires of you is going to become less and less painful. Okay? Because, like, right, when you're in that fear zone, any amount of growth is the worst thing ever. Okay? So, of course, right, in the beginning, it seems like the spiritual path is the most impossible thing because to grow from a state of fear is impossible and you have to change your state. Right? But once you get a little practice, right, you're, essentially that's what you're doing when you're integrating all the painful things that have happened to you in your past and you're coming into alignment with the reality that is, you are practicing over and over again being in that state of love, being in that state of love, being in that state of love where you can be with what's happening and it's not traumatic. It might be painful, but you can move through the pain. The pain actually is less because you're not resisting it. You're a deeper conductor. You're more aware. All these things happen. And so you you are going to continue to be called to grow, but it is going to become less and less painful as you go along. Not to say it's not, like maybe you can get to a place where growth and expansion, there's literally no fear left inside of you. You fully and completely trust life. And so whatever happens, you can actually enjoy it, right? But there's still going to be experiences of your house burning down or your friend dying or your car stopping or you stubbing your toe. Like these things are still going to happen. What's going to change is your perspective and perception of these things. So this is what we're saying. Don't look to the spiritual path to create a life where no negative thing ever happens to you again, where you have no more problems, where you never stub your toe again. That's not what's going to happen. It's an internal, complete rearranging of everything so that the circumstances continue to be what they are. Right? You're still going to live life where you're going to grow and expand and things are going to happen. But you're taking more and more deeper and deeper responsibility for yourself and coming more and more into alignment with life means that you are going to be less and less and less and less and less in a state of resistance and therefore life stops being so traumatic. Okay? It stops being so suffering. You can live in the moment when your friend dies and experience all of those painful emotions but allow yourself to cycle through it and still have an underlying complete understanding that this is what was supposed to happen. That this wasn't a mistake, they shouldn't have lived longer, it's not this, right? And so you can go through this moment and, exp and feel the human experience, right? Be in the human experience of pain and sadness. But it doesn't cause trauma that then is like a 10-year problem for you, okay? So this is the bottom line. Don't look to your spiritual path to take all your pain away. Look to your spiritual path to help you become more and more and more aligned with reality so that it stops being traumatic. Look to your spiritual path to continue to expand your awareness of your responsibility and your awareness of how everything works so that life no longer feels antagonistic to you, right? If you get stuck, try something different. You need to let go of techniques. There is no technique that's going to take you all the way, right? You're going to have to be constantly able to say, okay, that worked for a while, and now i got to keep going, right? Just like with healthy eating, you can't find a healthy diet and then stick to it for the rest of your life. That's not a thing. You're going to continue to grow and change and expand and do things differently for the rest of your life. If you try and make your diet the way that it is, and you think you figured it out, and you're trying to hold on to that for the rest of your life, it's not going to work. And it's just like that with spirituality, okay? So your spiritual path is bringing stuff up for you to see to heal. It's causing you pain because that pain is already there, all right? And then it's giving you an opportunity to become more and more comfortable with growth. And growth is going to continue to happen. Pain is still going to continue to happen, but suffering doesn't have to. That's what the path is. So don't look to people and say, well, they still have problems, so it doesn't work. No, they might still have problems, but their internal experience of those problems are so much different than yours. And you've got to understand that, okay? Like, subscribe, share, comment, do all that stuff. Find me on all my places down below. <laughs> I'm sorry, that sounded really gross. Find me on Instagram, Facebook, and uh, all those things. And I will see you in the next video, okay?
Mua.